It's coming up to seven o'clock on the 5th of June, 2018. And I'm pretty excited because I'm on my way to Kingston Pools for my first ever overnight trip on there. I've done a day's work. I'm on my own because it's my first overnight of this year where I'm on my own. And hopefully over the course of the next 24 hours, I'll have a couple of fish to show you. So let the games begin. up to Meadow Pool at Kingston and there's four other anglers fishing, one carper, sorry two carpers and two uh, like horse fishermen, one's on a pole. I'm waiting because they're going to move, They're not. none of them look like they're doing the night, maybe one of the carpers has got a day shelter but if he's doing the night he's on my favourite spot under the tree so that's a bit gutting for me. But uh, I've had a little mooch around, there's a few carp moving about and uh, so I'm going to make some PVA bags and use my time wisely while waiting and hopefully the next half hour so I can jump on a peg that I want to get on. So I'll show you where I'm fishing. Got the rods in just after eight o'clock. Got one down here to the left of my swim. Ended up not waiting for these lads to move. There was fish showing down in this area. I've got one right under the tree, just where that branch is hitting the water. I've got sweet corn, hemp, trout pellets and chickpeas all glugged up. A nice bit of smoked salmon oil and I'm fishing a boily top with a bit of corn on the top which incidentally I'm doing with both rods. Second rod is out to the island. That little gap in the trees there, I've got a tight set of clip to that branch there. And, uh, I've just got boilies over the top of that and a handful of corn. And then we'll see what the night brings. So it's coming on to half nine, the sun's just set and I've got base camp set up. Rod's been out there around about an hour and a half. I'm happy with where they are. They're staying there for the night. And if I don't get any action on them by sunrise, which is going to be, I don't know, about half four tomorrow morning, then there'll be a rechuck of the rods, maybe a quick walk around the lake before anyone else gets here in case the fish have moved on. I think my commotion the last two hours since I got here has probably spooked the fish off away from me, but I'm confident they're going to come back. And I'll be looking an idiot if I haven't got you one to show you during the night. All there is now is to listen to the bird song and the drone in the M40 motorway that's about 100 metres away. Right, let's hope this isn't a sign of things to come. On the left hand rod in the margins, a big, dirty snot bag. I hope these ain't gonna keep me up all night. It's quarter five in the morning. I must be woken up by this 10 pound common on the right hand rod, the one that's next to the island. I won from the margins during the night about eight and a half pound, beautiful looking big scale mirror and two green, one you saw at the start uh, of the evening. Over the moon with that, there's a carp on each rod now. And we get this fella back in. Let's see what the today brings. So we're tired back into my bivvy now. More than happy with that for a wake up call at quarter to five, bang on 10 pound common. I'll go through what I caught overnight I had that bream, it's early on in the video, and then about 11 o'clock I had an eight and a half pound big scale mirror, beautiful grey coloured fish. Um, I'll show you a picture of that now. And then around two o'clock this morning I had another bream on the left hand rod. A bit of, quite a big bream actually, I didn't bother weighing it, but I'll give it three and a half, four pound. Chucked that back in, recast, went back to sleep. After each fish, I 
put a little bit more bait in. And then I've had that one this morning. So I've had two bream and a little mirror on the margin and that 10 pound common from out near the island. And I get some shut eye. It'll have set for seven o'clock and get back up and we'll have a see if we can't see anything topping or bubbling. Cause at the moment there's nothing. This, this lake, just, they don't really show themselves at all. It's all one bob out, which is why I chose this spot in the end last night. But apart from that, they're hard to tell if they're there or not. It's 10.45 a.m. And since that quarter to five wake up call, just as the sun rose this morning, I haven't had a touch. I've got to reach up with both rods, put a fresh PVA bag on, got a bit tighter, a bit of bait over both spots. And I've had a walk around the lake this morning to see if there's any other sign of any carp. There isn't. The sun's out, there isn't any on the top. So for the time being, they stick it out. Instantly, it's just coming up to half past 11. I've had a reach up in a margin rod, fresh PVA bag, fresh bit of bait out on top of it. After a walk round, a few carp milling around under the tree down in this bottom corner to my left, the next tree down from what I'm fishing under. So I'm sticking to my guns and this has just gone rip roaring off while I've been taking my bivvy down. I've got a few more hours, that's three carp in the bag still, biggest has only been £10, but it's nice to get out on my own. And the sun's shining on us. That's the third carp of the session, so I can't complain of that. It's three carp and two bream that I've had so far. I've got a good few hours to go, but the sun's out and it's baking heat. So I'm going to get my stuff ready to fish on the top. I start having a little wander around the complex to see if I can't wingle one out better during the midday heat. The numbers of dragonflies and damselflies have increased dramatically over the day. Here's just a couple of them. I've just brought in a rod from near the island. It's been out there again now for about eight and a half hours and it's no round boily anymore. That, ladies and gentlemen, looks like it's been chewed up a little bit and chopped down by a good old crayfish. Plus the rig came back tangled up. So I took the putty off. That's a crayfish attractor. And we'll get a new bait on there and we'll put it back out there. I just brought it in because I thought it wasn't quite tight enough to the trees. They're cruising across over where I've got a bait. I can see them up near the surface. It's only about a foot and a half deep at the most when I'm fishing. I'm going to recast, put a new bait on, fresh PVA bag, a few more baits back out there and try and get it in tighter. It's clipped up tighter to the tree. Now a little bit up the bank from where I'm fishing. I've actually got a few of them coming up on dog biscuits. They've been taking them for about half an hour now. They're only little ones, so I think they're counting about eight altogether. But they're cruising through and taking them, no problem at all. I had the bait close to the island, I'm slowly bringing them in closer and closer so I can get them on a free line dog biscuit. I'll give them another 20 minutes or so and hopefully I'll be pulling one out for the camera. Not big, by any stretch, stretch of the imagination. But it's one off the top. Just gotta make sure I don't lose it. <clears throat> and in the background, they're still having the dog biscuits, which is great news. So I might still be able to get another. I need to get this one in first. Only on a size 10 up, so I can't really give it loads. Come on. Come on.
you'll see it's barely hooked. Literally, we just got to hold on. Let the rod do the work. Here we go. Boy, it was nearly ready. Come on. So it is eight pound. I'm gonna quickly get her back in off the top. Beyond me, they're still taking the mixes, so I might have a chance for another before we go. Let's get her back in and where she belongs. And here's my setup simplicity itself Enterprise tackle, fake dog biscuit, size 10 ESP curved shank hook, hay turn water knot, straight down to nothing. No float, just free lining it. On the bottom of the chum mixer, I've got a weight that comes in the pack when you buy it, and some super floss. Tie the super floss on, weights on the bottom, the weight sits up upright like that, and the hook's on top of the water. Carps can't see anything. Vaseline to float the line, it's all on the surface, and hopefully they won't take a second look before they wolf it down. And this is my loose feed. Pedigree chum mixer. They love it. It's half four, recruiting for one last chuck. Just wound the rods in for both for a fresh PVA bag. And look at that. My margin one under the tree, chiseled down. This is a harder boily as well. Crayfish. Usually don't have a problem with them in here, but seems to be giving me some grief today. After losing one a little while ago, it's had this beautiful seven and a half pound stunner. Absolute minter of a mirror cap. I can only imagine that at 25 30 pounds, I mean that'd be an absolute beauty. Got about an hour left, see if we can't get the water. Camera battery's running low, so I need to save it. And get it back in. Stonker. 12 pound on the nose, beautiful old scaly mirror. It's maybe a bit of auto damage possibly on its tail. A little spear of an otter bite maybe. Absolute stunner. And it was also shat in my mate's cradle. Cheers Nick Trotter for letting us borrow that for the 24 hours. My carp have lived in luxury on the bank while they've been getting looked after. It's just got six o'clock. Going to get this one back in. Start getting packed up. 7 p.m. on the 6th of June. And that's the end of our 24 hours. I had a very enjoyable session. Six carp, one lost. Three off the top, three off the bottom. And two bream. And I think you agree, it's a beautiful, beautiful little lake. In fact, it's a beautiful little fishery here at Kingston. Uh, three other lakes on the complex. All small, quiet. And uh, I, mean, I had the lake to myself all day today. All just left to say is thanks for watching. And please check out my other videos and tight lines. I'll see you soon.